Hello, it's Joe and Will again. Uh, we're back with the Space Marine Codex. We're reviewing the Fast Attack. And uh, like the beginning of all our other videos, this is the competitive side. We're not telling you how to play or anything about fluff. Like we want you, this is if you want to further yourself as a competitive and better yourself as a competitive player. So let's get right into this uh, Assault Squads. Okay, so Fast Attacks for Space Marine purposes have pretty much always been useless. Uh, assault squads were only good in Blood Angels because they were troops. Uh, as far as they were in taking them in the normal Space Marines, they were garbage. Um, the times of assaults have changed now with so many uh, Overwatch fire. Um, you don't even want to get it started on Tau, how much intercept fire they can do with their uh, Overwatch fire when they have the whole army fire. Uh, there's one thing I want to say because of this, and if anyone knows, because if you're playing allies with Tau, and if you charge the, the Space Marines and they're your allies, the rule of the book says they can defensive fire anyone that's being assaulted as long as they have a supporting fire rule. It says you can target any friendly or help any friendly unit. Now, the way I read that, that means they can help your brothers. I mean, they can help crew, they can help all that stuff. So I can't see why not. If there's anyone that thinks that they've found out, there's no errata on it yet, by all means, uh, give me the opinion on that. But I just wanted to throw that out there. It um, does say just a single friendly yes. unit because I thought you were wrong. And when I read the rule, it made me think, well, you can just shoot. As long as you're within six inches, you can shoot whatever is r running around trying to get to your men. Yes. Uh, but anyways, to get back on topic, uh, assault squads, they're still a basic Marine with a jetpack. Uh, <laughs> they can get in a little faster, but they still got to start either across. Yes, they can deep strike. I know I always say... You deep strike them, you're, you're off for a couple turns, you're going to come behind, you could scatter, it's horrible. Again, Blood Angels have a special rule on that, they only deep strike with one, scatter with one dice. These aren't Blood Angels, so would I ever run Assault Squads? No. Uh, there's so many reasons I get into that, but everybody knows, anyone that's played them knows they're just garbage. They lowered the points a couple, but it's not, actually only one point, I think there were 18 points for these, but anyways, no. Uh, Land Spanish Squadrons. Land Spanish Squadrons, you always see those, they, they are a great looking model, they really do, they look nice. They're two wounds, you can't deep strike them because if you do it's just, it's garbage. You're going to come down and you're going to have that one or two multi-melted shots and you're going to shoot. But you're not going to earn your points back. And a lot of times there's always that kill point game in a tournament and they're just so easy to kill. They're just so fun to shoot at, it's two hull points with armor 10, you can kill them with bolter fire. We were talking about uh, in Elite, the Stern Guard. Could you use this as, like, with the multi melta and maybe uh, you give it another uh, multi melta like two multi meltas could you use this as your deep strike first blood unit? Because this seems a whole lot cheaper than a Stern The guard. only difference between that and a Stern guard, a Stern guard comes out first turn. Uh, so they have no time to react against it. Yeah, uh, but this Lance Bridge, you can't balance when it's going to come out. And it could come out by turn three or four, and you've already had, your first blood's gone. Um, because of that first blood question, you can't really take a Lance Bridge Squadron. Because first turn is going to happen usually first blood. There's a few games that you're like, oh my god, nothing died. Or maybe not enough to get a first blood. But usually first turn is first blood. It's part of the game. It's the disadvantage to setting up and having, you know, you have to set your models up first, but you get to shoot first. The defender can deploy all around. We're going to have a tactic on that and explain things you can do to avoid that. But I will say seize the initiative is a, probably really a stupidest thing they ever added on that because you're already taking the flaw of setting up, but that's a whole other purpose. Um, Stormtelling gunships, again, two hull points. Armor 11. Why would I not take these guys? Because a hell drake can fly up and you know hit it. with a. You get no jinx save, nothing. It doesn't have to waste his flamer on you. It just vector strikes you and kills you. <laughs> Done. So easily. Um, they're horrible. They're... You can't even get enough points. They are cheaper points, but okay. And I'm going to say right now that cheaper being 125 points with the Skyhammer missile. What can you get for 130 points that flies with three hull points? Oh, uh, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> <A> vendetta? Vendetta? <laughs> vendetta that has three last cannons, three hull points, can carry <laughs> troops for five more points. And I know the new Imperial Guard book hasn't come out, and I can't wait to see the Imperial Guard's faces if it changes, because I really hope it does, because it's so cheap. Uh, is it a, a broken thing? No, it's not. I mean, it kills armor, it kills flyers, but it's not broken. I mean, the Stormtown gunship at 125 weights seems broken right now to uselessness because of the competitive. Like, if you're playing Space Marines, why don't you take Imperial Guard allies and, and take vendettas? 
I mean, why waste your fast attack on a Storm Talon Gacha? I mean, if you want to run it fluffy and you're running a White Scar list, and they do go in like a fluff list for having two or three in your White Scar list, that looks cool. I mean, you've got your army all painted up white and black and red. It looks awesome. Will they do good and will they earn their points back? No, because they're, they're running Strength 7 weapons. Maybe the multi melta is even then... It's not worth it. It's not going to earn any points to get the 125 points back. It's not going to shoot down flyers, and if it does, you'll be surprised because it actually did. So would I ever take it? No, because you can take allies now in this game. you got to love 6th edition and that purpose, guys. Allies are amazing. It makes it so you're looking through your book and like, oh, my list sucks. I don't have any good fast attack. Well, take a different army. As long as they're Battle Brothers or at least close to it. Um, what is it? Allies of Convenience? Yeah, take allies. I mean, there's you no know what? Even there. even if you really need a point, even desperate allies, like if you just have that one throwaway unit, you need that one thing. It, it's not so horrible. I mean, it's great. You're running Space Marines, and you gotta take your fast attack. You know, you take your thing. You only gotta pay for one troop. You take one company command squad and one veteran squad, and you throw in the vendetta. You now have a line breaking unit that can fly across and get across the board. I mean, Space Marines don't really have that unless they pay for a Storm Raven. They have the same ability, but Storm was a lot more points, and it uses up a heavy support. So now you have a Vendetta in your army. You know, why waste? Until the Imperial Guard book comes out, and it's a whole other topic. But right now, it's out. 130 points can give you a Storm Town. But a way better one, Vendetta, okay? Don't waste your points. Take an ally. There's no reason not to. Bike squads. Okay, bike squads. Unless you're running them as troops, and that means you're running a white scar list, they're great. There is a lot of flaws to the white scar list. Um, we were said we we're going to touch base on that fast attack, so we will. Uh, bikes on their own, if you're not riding them, they're just not worth it. They're expensive. They're 21 points a piece. They don't get the special upgrades like the white scars to have the plus one jinx save. You know. To move through cover, and that's what makes them really good. Moving through cover without any saves at all, not having to worry about dangerous terrain, not have to worry about anything, not to roll anything, just roll over it. That so makes them good. A big thing too is if you're taking them as fast attack, they don't do anything. Like, what is it you would take a bike squad as a fast attack for? You might take it as a contesting. I mean, a lot of people, and this is a difference. You know, you play against Eldar, they have those three jet bikes, so they keep them reserved as long as possible. So jet bike across the board last turn and take your objective. That's a scoring unit, so it gives them a scoring unit. These can't do that. Yes, they can contest it, which sounds good, but they can't do what an Eldar jet bike do. They can't go all the way across the board with a turbo boost. They can only go 24 inches. That's not that great. It's not a threat. It's not worth it. You can't keep them alive long enough to... And if you take enough of them to keep them alive, like 10 of them, you just waste so many points. So would I ever run them in that? I mean... No, like for the white scar purposes, guys. Okay, white scars. You can take a uh, captain that has the five command squad with all grab guns. You can take grab gun squads. Uh, it's a great list. It's a fast strike army. It seems amazing. It seems overpowered for ambition, but it's not. Okay, it's very easily dealt with. Like I said before, in the troops, if you take a scout unit or two scout units, you can stop this army cold. You know, if these plan on get on your your plan Tau, for instance, I'm just use Tau. I don't use a lot of examples because I love Tau. But if you got your army set back in your defensive line here, he's got his army deployed over here, and this is just a standard deployment where he can technically get across the board on you know, pretty much first turn by putting your scouts, you know, right here in the center of the map, blocking your defense line. Yeah, waste it. Yeah, you may give up first blood, but you're not losing the game. <laughs> the most important thing. Yeah, so, that's a big difference. You know, your scouts are deployed like that. Your defense line's here. He can't scout. The rules for scout move, he can't be within 12 inches of an enemy model, okay? Which means he can go this way, but again, he's not getting close to your defense line. You've already stopped him. For whatever that point cost you, if you took it on Space Marines, 55 points. You just stopped that. That bought you two turns for 55 points. If he shoots at it, great. Let him shoot at it. Who cares? If you have camel cloaks and you go to cover... If you don't have cover, oh well, who cares? You just lost them. Big deal. They did their job. It's going to come around now, and if you're playing Tau, for instance, this is just a, this is a croup, okay? That's cheap. Then you get another croup bubble wrap, and then more bubble wrap. We talked about the bubble wrap. It's just going to, he's going to have to salt, he's going to have to shoot, and he's going to have to constantly go, and you're going to keep withering down those bikes. Another flaw to bikes, if you play against Chaos, and they're always in tournaments, Helldrakes. You're never going to run against them. Any smart player is going to come in, the turn they come in, and he's going to, Uses Demon Forge ability, can reroll his wounds, he's going to Vector Strike, kill three or four. He's going to Flame and kill three or four or more. He just killed nine bikes, and you got no save. No save. Another, nine bikes. Th another thing, too, this might come out more in a friendly game. 
uh, more than a tournament because I know some tournaments have rules for this, but you can even place objectives uh, in the higher tiers of ruins as the rule book. I don't know what they rule it, in the it tournament. It does say in the rule book you can place a piece of objective, like Will said, in any impassable, they can be impassable terrain, but it can be ruins. And ruins, if they have a three levels, it's still passable, but it's not impassable. Which means you can put the top of the thing, the bikes can't get up there. If you're running all troops, you can't get to the objective. I mean, it says you have to be three inches. If it's high enough, like some of those Games Workshop buildings, you can't do it. I mean, most tournaments will say that you have to put things on the ground level, but if they don't, you can be a dick, and no one wants to fight against a dick. You should always discuss terrain before the start of the game, but that yeah. is something right. According to the rules, you can do it. Um, and also, you know what? Uh, as Joe just said, always make sure you discuss terrain, because I've played against some other people, and just what their thoughts are of how a terrain piece should work might not be what your thoughts are. Exactly. So especially in a tournament, make sure you t take that couple of extra seconds, a couple minutes, and discuss the terrain and make sure you're on the thing because there's nothing worse than being in a game and someone's driving through a wall and you're like, well, I made my move through cover thing. It, it made sense. I go through this window or something and they're moving through with like a bike or a fucking tank or something. And I was like, oh, that doesn't make sense. According always... to the move through ruins, you can just drive right through the ruins. And if it's a wall, I mean, you really need to discuss it. There is time for a tournament. And there's no, they usually give five minutes to discuss terrain. Use it, guys, because don't just say who cares because it's going to come up. And it may be a friendly game, but before you know it, you're arguing because of something happened. And it does happen. I mean, obviously, a force is area terrain. Some buildings like this, like this little sandbag thing, some might call it ruins, some might call it area terrain. You need to know that because when it comes down, you shoot him. He's like, I got a four plus saber. And again, the rules, if you're in ruins, a ruins, for instance, if you're on the walls of the thing, you get a four plus cover save, you go to ground and get a three plus. Now, this being said, the bottom of a ruins is called area terrain because you get the four plus on the wall. When you go to ground, people are saying you get a two plus save. I disagree with this. I believe it's only a three plus save no matter what. It's how it's supposed to be bit. But again, people arguing the rules and people can say their comments on that, what they think it is. But I still believe the best cover save you can get going to ground without any cloaks or anything you have is a three plus save. Oh, I, I actually just read it quickly off topic. I did read an article about that and I'm pretty sure... Uh, they were discussing it. it was Bell of Lost Souls or something like that, and they were saying the best you can get without an extra bonus is three plus. There's no reason. There's nothing that you People should get unless to... maybe like an order from yes, Imperial People Guard. Camel always Close. do it. They'll always argue. They'll read what they want to read. And they'll interpret what they want to read. And they sometimes ruin it, and they have to you know errat it. And because of that you don't get like it's just it's arguable. It's not our topic. <laughs> so far as coming into it, <laughs> vector strike flame. Losing nine bikes minimum per Heldrake per turn. Okay, that is horrible. You're looking at 22 points apiece, correct? Or 21 points apiece with no buffs, no bonus. If you lose nine bikes, you lost 180 points a turn. Uh, if he has three Heldrakes, he could have the four, but I mean, if he has three Heldrakes, which most Chaos players will run two or three, you're losing nine bikes a turn, which just in three turns alone, you lost 29 plus bikes. You just, they'll destroy you and you can't kill them. You, you have no way to kill them unless you're running. I mean, you won't shoot them down. It's just there's no way they're gonna they're gonna kill you. You can hope for maybe a draw, but they're gonna kill you. If you can kill their troops, great. But the problem is they have enough defensible units, which is hard for chaos. And keep in mind, if you can stop those hell drakes before they come into play by getting uh, getting lucky and killing every single model before those hell drakes come out, great. You can do it. But will it happen mostly? I don't think so. Uh, especially not with long table edge and vanguard. You're in trouble. Now, on that note, is there much to say about the attack bike squad or scout bike squad, or they just kind of follow the, the uh, same pattern? Like, is there really any point to take uh, them? Attack bike squads, again, are useless. There's no point in touching. <laughs> 45 points, it's not worth it. Uh, they're not even worth taking in. I don't see many white scared lists even running attack bikes because they don't have the ability to do anything. Scout bike squads have a couple of cool abilities with using, you can make a terrain piece, uh, you know, trapped, and they take some damage, but big deal. They just, they're not worth it, guys. Unless you're running white scores, bottom line, don't run bikes. Okay then, that's the end of our fast tack thing. Please leave a comment or, uh, you know, just talk talk with us about what you guys think, what, what we're saying. So uh, on that note, thanks for watching and make sure you subscribe.